Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our NFL Week 2 preview between the Carolina Panthers and the Buffalo Bills. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Panthers. Charles Godfrey played a hell of a game last week for the Carolina Panthers, both in run support as well as in pass coverage. And that front seven as a whole did a great job versus the run, only allowing 2.7 yards of carry and seven total yards rushing on the ground. Offensively, they moved the ball well, but they have to convert in the red zone and the receivers must get into their routes quickly and they have to get open versus man and eat up that cushion versus zone if they want to have some success this week versus the Bills secondary. For the Bills in this ballgame, offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett can't handcuff the offense. There's a lot of young and talented playmakers on that side of the ball. You have to take the training wheels off and allow these guys to make mistakes on the fly. Trust me, your offense will be that much better because of it. And they have to work other receivers outside of Stevie Johnson into the ball game early. Develop that continuity with EJ Manuel as well as that confidence that he can go to these guys later on in the game. Now defensively, it's a must that they get off the field. Last week, they allowed the Patriots to convert 11 out of 23rd downs. That can't happen this week versus the Carolina Panthers who can run the football and thus chew up the T.O.P. And I would also roll coverage towards Steve Smith. Take away Cam Newton's number one option and force those other receivers to beat you consistently. If they can do that, the Bills have an excellent chance of winning this ball game. The Carolina Panthers have a very strong defensive front and they can get pressure on the quarterback without blitzing. And I'm going to show you how this week versus the Buffalo Bills, they can stunt up front and play coverage on the back end in hopes to try to get EJ Manuel to throw into a zone and create a turnover. And we're going to draw a weak variation, a weak sky variation of cover three right here. It looks cover two pre-snap, two safeties back deep, but it's going to shift to a cover three and EJ Manuel is going to think the free safety is coming on the blitz. So just let's draw up everybody's responsibility. The strong side defensive end is lined up in a seven technique. He's going to crash that C gap. That's his responsibility. Strong side linebacker is going to play a loose eight technique. He's off the line of scrimmage. He's going to read strong side run and then drop back into his curl out coverage. Corners in his deep third. This corner is also in his deep third. Now, the three techniques job is to loop around into the weak side A gap. Why? Because we have the one tech push up field, then crashing the inside shoulder of the center, trying to create that room for this tackle to loop around, and he's crashing the A gap. So we got double A gap pressure. There goes your stunt right here. And next we have the strong side inside, I'm sorry, the middle backer. His job is to overread the running play. So he's going to overread the run this way, then drop into his hook to curl responsibility. Now we have weak side. We have the defensive end's job is to play contain on the outside versus the outside run, as well as versus the quarterback trying to get outside the pocket. We have the weak side backer's job is to show blitz pre-snap, drop into his hook to curl responsibility. So you have two guys with hook to curl. You have the outside back on the strong side with curl to out. And now, as the quarterback gets under center, we're going to have the free safety walk up as if he's getting ready to blitz. And at the snap of the ball, he's going to drop into this curl to out responsibility. The strong safety is gonna buzz over and get into his deep third. So you see where we stunt up front, double A gap pressure versus a guy that can move around in the pocket and also versus a spread offensive attack. We have four guys in underneath coverage. We have three guys back deep. So they can get pressure with their front four, still be protected in the intermediate passing game as well as in the deep passing game. I think that's how they can influence EJ Manuel into a bad decision with the football. The Buffalo Bills have unique personnel in the backfield with both CJ Spiller as well as Fred Jackson. Both guys are excellent receivers out of the backfield. And this week versus the Carolina Panthers, they're facing a very tough linebacking core. Yet they're over aggressive. And I'm going to show you how utilizing the running back crossers in the passing game off of the fake draw concept will help influence those linebackers and get the football to those backs in the passing game so that way they can make one miss and get up the field. It's all about getting those guys to bite on the fake of the draw play. So we're going to have the fake draw right here out of the shotgun, staple, mesh point right there. And we're going to bring the running back, whether it's CJ Spiller or Fred Jackson, up through the line and over. Now versus man, he's going to keep going. Versus zone, he's going to settle down right here. And why we have the backside tight, we have the tight end, I'm sorry, going across as well the middle. Versus man, keep going. Versus zone, settle down. And this is a six yard route. So that's the mesh point. You want to cross those backers up in hopes to get CJ Spiller or Fred Jackson on the pick route or your tight end Scott Chandler as well running through a zone or running away from a linebacker. You can hit that football quickly. These are your built in hot routes because on the outside at 
these guys are running streaks to receivers trying to clear out space for these crossers. And we also have the slot guy, which would be your second read, running 12 yards up the field and running an in route. So this is at 12 yards, and these are just streaks, clear out routes. So you really work in the middle of the field. Now versus man, again, he's gonna keep running versus zone. He's gonna settle down, find the soft spot, and EJ Man, you can hit the, uh, hit the pass um, quickly to either the slot guy or the back or the tight end. So he has those reads in place for him to help take advantage of an over aggressive linebacking core of Carolina. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For the Panthers, I would go with a matchup zone versus the spread offense of the Buffalo Bills. Consistently communicate back there in the secondary Pass guys off from one zone to the next, and you can have a chance to compete back there defensively. And you want to keep it tight on the offensive side of the football, your base 21 personnel, your ace formations. I think those formations are when the Panthers are most effective on offense. And you want to attack the deep middle of the field in the passing game. I think there's some vulnerability back there for the Buffalo Bills in the deep middle, so the Panthers should be able to work the seams and the hashes in the passing game. And for the Buffalo Bills in this ball game, you want to feed C.J. Spiller. You have to take those chances with the negative plays when you have a dynamic player in the backfield like a C.J. Spiller because those negative two-yard runs or that drop pass, the next play will be that 80-yard touchdown run or that 80-yard touchdown reception. You gamble on talent, and that's why you have to feed Spiller. And on defense, you want to adjust to the Carolina Panthers based off the formation. Adjust your coverage based off the formation. A lot of times the Panthers are predictable by alignment, so you can effectively get in the right position to make a play on the ball. And the screen game has to be in effect on offense. When you have an over-aggressive defensive front like the Carolina Panthers, you want to slow that rush down with the screen game with Fred Jackson as well as C.J. Spiller. Utilize both backs in the passing game this week to your effectiveness. The X Factor for the Panthers will be linebacker Luke Keekley, getting everybody aligned properly and also being able to diagnose where those backs are in the passing game. The X Factor for the Bills will be center Eric Wood and how well he can diagnose and make the proper calls to block up those stunts and twists that the Panthers love to bring with that front four. I like the Carolina Panthers in this ball game. The Panthers defense, in my opinion, is very good, especially in that front seven. I think that right there will be enough to frustrate what Buffalo wants to do offensively. And on offense, look for the Panthers to run the football, operate well off play action, and this time around convert in the red zone. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Panther fan forums and Bill fan forums for always showing football game plan support.